I'm here to interview the guys from the Source Magazine. Source Magazine is a hip hop periodical put out periodically. That's why they call it periodical. 594, there it is. Come on, let's go inside, you know, and uh, let's get busy, you know what I'm saying? Yo, uh, yo, man, I get here, they don't even open the doors. Excuse me, what, will you open the door, please? Stop putting your face in, open the door. Oh, oh, everybody's a comedian today. Everybody's a comedian. How you doing, dudes? It's my man, it's my man, Money Dukes, you know what I'm saying? He's opening the door for me. This, this is the Source Magazine, right? The fifth floor? Source Magazine? That's on the fifth floor, right? Right? It's fifth floor? I think we're at the right place. This brother's Bellevue or some Bainbridge Hospital. Sorry, you my man, no good looking. See ya. Anyway, yo, let's just, you know, let's go get elevated, good looking out, part Dukes. Anyway, yo, um, these two kids started this magazine on like a wing and a prayer. You know, with no money, and uh, they, they, these people are not from the source. They're just people walking through. Hi, how you doing? Good, good looking out, good. Yo, he's the man, right? You kept Mac Daddy. Anyway, Source Magazine was started in 1988. It was a one-page little newsletter started out by these two kids at their Harvard Raps, you know, station. That's right, Harvard had hip-hop back in the day, um, which turned out to be a very important magazine. So I'm going to go get an elevator. Let's go upstairs. Come on. Oh, it's a miracle. We gotta elevate. Come on, let's go. Now, you know what? I'm leaving you here. Get back. Get back, man. Come on, man. Chill. You're sweating me, man. I'll talk to you upstairs. I see you. Source Magazine. Source Magazine. Uh, I guess it's this way. It's kind of like... It's kind of like a scene from The Shining, isn't it? Like these hallways. Yo, there ain't no doors here. It's like kind of like Twilight Zone, kind of. Wait, do you think we took a wrong turn? Ain't no doors. I'm walking through hallways. What, they got a cave in here? This is bugged. This is definitely bug. Oh, I think it's this way. I hear some noise coming from that way. Yo, what up, fellas? Hey. Kmart stock boy meeting? Is this a source meeting? What's going on? What up, Dave? How you, man? Oh, you trying to diss? What's up, Truce? Damn, what's up? <laughs> cool baddie in the house, man. What's up, fellas, man? What's going on? Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Yo, hey, yo, they're calling you back at Broadway Car Wash. It's time for you to get back. Yo, what up, John? What's up, fellas? Hey, yo, man. Yo, can we do this? Can you get your stock boys out of here so we can have this meeting? Or, you know? No, for real, this is the whole staff, writers, conglomerates of Source Magazine. And everybody here is, it's, it's a requirement, has to be under 25 years old. That's a point everybody should know. This entire magazine process. Equal opportunity employer? Definitely, definitely. Every, every, this entire magazine, to get this whole thing out every month, is done by people under 25 years old. I think all three of us agree that this is a black art form. So playing devil's advocate, who are you guys to write about black culture? What makes you think you should put out a rap magazine for black culture when it's not your culture? The magazine was started, you know, uh, because we were doing a rap radio show and that, you know, we were interacting with the, with the rap fans, you know, the real rap fans, and um, we felt the same needs that they felt and, you know, shared the same interests with them. It's not really that, you know, that strange of a thing. When I saw the transition, which is about a year ago when you first did your first color photo, um, it kind of reminded me of a young Rolling Stone kind of thing. Do you think that's a fair assumption to put you in that category? Well, rap music is, without a doubt, not only the most popular music in America, but the most socially conscious and the most socially active. So, you know, if we can be a magazine that reflects these changes and this positive change that's coming over America, in the same way that maybe Rolling Stone did in the 60s and 70s, we're happy to do that. The magazine as a whole is, is generated or has been generated towards the underground rappers, the, rap, the rappers who don't get the exposure. Do you feel that helps your magazine or hurts your magazine? Because for a magazine to survive, you, you, know, you, you need to sell copies. If we want to expose a main source or a Cool G rap or something like that to a wider audience, we've got to be able to get the magazine in the hands of that wider audience. So we're at a point now where our distribution is developing now. We're going out on the national newsstands. Devil's Advocate Part 2. You went to Harvard. Your parents paid crazy money. Why would you want to waste your time with this? Anyone could sit and see, you know, what the problem with the way that rap is covered in the media, the, the way it gets only gets attention when something negative happens, you know, the, the problems that are going on, um, and what rap represents and how rap can help change these, these si the situation here in America and change for the better. And we believe in it 100%. I mean, I couldn't see myself doing anything else than this right now.
And if I were to evacuate, you'd probably be straight in the straight. Let's just make up a label. Let's say Bozak Records gives you crazy money for the front and back pages, right? Crazy money. And they got MC Joe Neckbone. He's worthless. How do you write against him? In the long run, what's going to pay off for them is having a credible magazine that when they do have, have an artist that, that you know, deserves to get its props and you know, so on, is going, to, is going to get that in this magazine. It's going to translate over to those readers who believe in a magazine. Once you start giving into that, then you just become a hype mobile. Right. And you know, it's like every page is a different artist, and here's their bio, and that's wow, all wow, very wow. nice. Right. And you know, we're not about that. Yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, who are your favorite rap artists? Right now, uh, I would have to say that right now my, that my three favorite rap albums are uh, number one, Main Source. Another one of my favorite albums is uh, Brand Newbie and All For One. And um, I like the new EPMD album. It's kind of funny how y'all didn't mention any third bass stuff, but that's okay. I'll take care of no, that. No, camera. No, no, no. Camera's off, you know, we'll handle that in the back. <laughs> no. Like <laughs> Shaz. I don't think that I could take it. We'd like to leave with a quote from third base. We left more than a mark, we left a dent, because we just proxied the environment. Yo, peace from Slim Max. Peace. <laughs>